Guys, I don't want to see a single comment about my turtleneck. It is 105 degrees every single day where I live and enough. Enough, I'm over it, summer is canceled. I just want to wear my sweaters in my home so I can experience joy. Hi everyone, welcome, welcome back. A few videos ago, we took a trip to Michael's and got some supplies for some potential art projects, one of which was a plain black pot. I also asked you guys on Instagram what you wanted to see me make next, and the consensus was a planter pot of some kind. So you see, you see where I'm going with this? Now, my ultimate art goal in life is to have some sort of studio space in my home with a kiln and a pottery wheel, where I sit and I play with clay in the evenings and drink cider and feel like a real artisanal woman. But we're not there yet. Right now we're in the phase of life where I make stuff sometimes at my kitchen table while I watch Unsolved Mysteries. And that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to have a makeover to this plain pot. I've also seen some comments requesting I make some sort of fairy core house design. And I have seen where people will paint pots as fairy houses and use those out in their garden, which I love. But I'll do you one better. I want to make a hobbit house planter. So then when the plant is like in the pot, it'll look like the rolling green hills, like with the bushes and like, you know, you know, you see it, you see it, right? So that's what we're going to make today. Uh, let's just get into it. All right, so refresh. Here's what our planter looks like. At first I thought I was going to make a replica of Bilbo's house and that would be cool, but my pot's the wrong color. I couldn't find the right color of spray paint. I didn't want to buy a new pot. So anyway, we're scrapping that idea. We're not making Bilbo's house. We're gonna make my house if I were a hobbit. Okay, and to build my house, I will be using polymer clay. I have a couple different Sculpey options here. I'm gonna save that big bag for another time and try to use up these little packages that I have. You could totally achieve something like this using lots of different colors of clay alone, but I only have a couple colors on hand to choose from. So I'm just gonna make my pieces and then paint and customize them later. That's the plan. The first element I'm making here is the door. This is the most important part, the round hobbit door. I've rolled out a slab of clay here that's pretty flat, but still thick enough that I can pick it up without having it rip. Then I'm using a pointed tool to carve on some wood grain texture onto this thing. Now, if you have a round cookie cutter at home, that would be perfect. And you know, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I do not though. So I'm just gonna use this old spaghetti sauce jar, hey, to stamp out my circle here. And it didn't cut all the way through, but that's okay. I can just finish the job with a palette knife and then pat down all my jagged edges here. And perfect, that looks about right to me. Before I go any further, I'm just gonna cover the front of my pot here with some tin foil. That way I can peel off my sculpts more easily. Don't want anything getting stuck on there. Then I'm gonna set to work on an archway that's gonna wrap around my door. I've made some rounded brick shaped pieces together that I'm just squishing around in a circle. And then we can't forget our doorknob. I've rolled up a little ball, placed that in the center here. And as a final touch, I'm just taking that knife again and roughing up the texture of these bricks. We're looking very rustic. And I'm gonna repeat that process to make two little windows that's gonna go on each side of our door, just like so. Okay, moving on. I tried out this stone colored Sculpey clay in my last video where I made spears for some Ewoks and I loved the effect it gave. It really does look like stone with zero effort on my part. So my plan here is to make rocks. I know, I know it's, it's innovation, but the plan is to cover the walls of my house in these little river rocks. I'll bake them on their own and then I can attach everybody together afterwards. I got a couple more details I wanna incorporate, the first being a lantern. I'm making a little block of wood here that'll just stick directly onto the wall. And then I made this little lantern shaped moment here. And I also made sure to poke holes in each, one on the front of the wood block and one on the top of the lantern. You'll, you'll see the vision, you'll, you'll see it come together later. And last thing for the clay, it wouldn't be my house if it didn't have mushrooms now, would it? So let's take a handful of mushrooms to be growing up the sides of our stone walls. And once all my pieces are sculpted, it's time to bake them. I'm gonna load everybody up on a baking sheet and just pop these guys in the oven. Don't, don't look at my dirty oven, guys. This, this is not about that. Now for the doors and the windows, I need to bake these on a curved surface so they'll sit nicely on our house. I was too scared to risk my pot in the oven and my Google Home told me that mason jars would explode in the oven. 
Now, I'm not necessarily in the mood to clean up hot glass shards today. So instead, I just kind of like rolled my tin foil around the jar to create like a rounded shape for them to bake on. Ultimately, that worked okay. The windows are still a little bit flat, but the door did get like a nice rounded edge. So hopefully we can just, we can make it work. Now's the time to paint everything. For my archways, I'm going with a brick motif. I've poured out several dark red, orange, brown tones for this, and I'll use those to get some nice like variation and color on these bricks. We did have some casualties here, uh, some bricks that were not strongly squished. We will have to do some restoration work later with the glue gun, but that's okay. I'm gonna finish up the other window here and then we can move on to the door. Using the same approach here, making use of all of these nice autumn colors to get some variation on our bricks. Here's what that looks like all painted together. I felt like it looked too neat, like too clean. So let's sponge over some darker brown tones over the top of that. Maybe fill in some of those scuff marks with a darker color too. And I'm happier with that. It looks more lived in, like more handmade. I like that. Moving on to the door itself. I've got three different green tones to use here. I'm going to cover the whole door in my darkest forest green. And then I can stipple on some of those lighter tones with a sponge again. I like blending wet paint together this way making the color lighter as I get towards the center of the door. I'm also going to go in with a liner brush and make some more wood grain-esque strokes with that lighter color as well. And then we can go into those deeper carvings that we made with a dark brown green. And that's really making it come to life, I think. It's giving it some good dimension. Then I've got a metallic gold paint to cover the doorknob. And guys, I think I might have popped off. I don't know. I really like how the door is looking. After that, I wasn't exactly sure how to paint the windows. I tried a blue glass first, but that kind of clashed with like the colors I've already got going on. So I ended up painting the windows black and then used that same metallic gold to make some little like cottage-esque window panes here. Are they symmetrical? No, they are not, but we are moving on at this time. Now this lantern, you're probably like, I have, I have no idea what I'm looking at here. And I, I feel you, but, but stay with me here. We're gonna paint the lantern black and then give each side a little yellow rectangle. And then we'll paint that wood block brown to look more like a wood block. Okay, yeah, it's coming together. And then I'm keeping the mushrooms pretty simple, leaving some plain white ones with like some beige and cream shading on the under bits. And then others I painted brown, gave it a little highlighted part here. And then the stones are already perfect as they are, so nothing to do there. We're just going to protect this paint job with a layer of clear coat. This is a matte varnish, and I'll do about two layers of that on each piece. Now it's time to see the lantern come together. I'm using some gold craft wire here, wrapping a little corkscrew shape around the end of a paintbrush. And then I'll just kind of like squish that corkscrew together so I have more of a flat spiral shape, trimming off the excess so I leave a straight flat wire on the edge of the spiral. And that's what we're going to super glue into the pinhole of our wood block. I also made this little looped pin shape with the wire that I will glue into the pinhole on top of our lantern. And then when both of those are dry, I can loop the lantern pin through the spiral we made and have a little dangly lantern. Oh my God, what? how cute is that? Stop it right now. Okay, now our pieces are ready and we can assemble everything together onto the planter. I'm breaking out the hot glue gun for this because it is funner than the super glue and everybody getting glued into position. I was a little worried that the hot glue wouldn't adhere super well to this like smooth satin surface, but it was a non-issue. It all stuck nice and secure. Here we have a small montage of me placing 50 rocks. I'm not covering the pot fully. I'm leaving some parts like peeking out, like it's all part of the house. There are some parts where the door and the windows like don't fully make contact with the pot, so there's some gaps. But that's not a problem when you have bags and bags of dried moss in your home. I'm gonna lay down a little bit of glue and then stuff those areas with moss. We'll get our mushrooms situated. And before we see the finished house, we need to find a plant to fill our pot with. So let's take a field trip to ye old Home Depot Garden Center. Oh 
Oh my god, how do we get here? Yep, hold that thought. We're gonna take a slight detour to Michael's to check out what Halloween stuff they've got out. This was like the first week of August and they did not disappoint you guys. They've got cauldrons, potions, Edgar Allan Poe. I really need to befriend like a fabulously rich widow who throws an annual Halloween party in her New England mansion. And I like do her tablescapes, you know? I love that for me. I love those spooky villages. I found this festive squirrel. It was a great time. But back to this video. Here we are at the Home Depot, ready to go. But look what's next door. Just kidding, they weren't ready yet. They were still setting up, but soon, soon I will be back. But right now we're looking for a plant, a hobbity plant. I was hoping for something kind of mossy. This one had like a nice texture and look to it, but these needed direct sun. Some of these hanging baskets had good options. I like the idea of it like trailing down the pot, but these were a little bit too big. These whimsical flowers I thought were fun, but again, they needed direct sunlight. And that's not gonna survive in my apartment. I took Gander over at the Succulents and this little fella caught my eye because it looks like ogre ears. So if anybody out there making a Shrek planter, this is your guy, this is for you. But ultimately what I chose was this dwarf bonsai tree. First of all, it has dwarf in the name. Then it's got the moss. I think it looks kind of magical. I just repotted this guy at home and here is the finished result. Well, I, I kind of love it. I would live here. I added a little stack of pumpkins under the door. It looks really cute, but I think it's missing something. A tiny Gandalf, perhaps, because we got one of those. I made him out of polymer clay as well and just stuck a toothpick in the bottom so I can stick him right on top of our moss here. Now I kind of wish this was an incense burner so I could have like a little smokestack coming out of a chimney. That would be everything. But regardless, I think it's precious. I love how the lantern dangles in the wind. Now, I just hope that my bonsai tree will prosper. Thank you guys so much for watching and for giving me a safe space here to share stuff like this. I really appreciate it. It's fun for me. I will see you in the next one. Bye.